We have a transfer student joining us today. Yes, the journey to Mob Psyche. This is so exciting. Asagiri. Nice to meet you. Or not? <laughs> well, I don't know. Is there going to be a romance subplot in Mob Psychological Journey? Can't you feel your own frustration? I swear to God, he's not saying frustration in that line. <laughs> Listen carefully. <laughs> Discord choices. <laughs> is this the episode about my life? <laughs> A welcoming party. Sounds like a plan. Oh, this is the girl that's being possessed. That's who it is. So what's his story? Damn, Mob gets left out and bullied in his own fantasies and dreams. You don't know who you don't know what I know about Mob. He's the best. So what you're experiencing is a parallel world that could have easily come to pass had your circumstances been slightly different. He'll be alright. I have faith in him. Oof. Are my lessons that boring for you? You can remain standing. All there was left was the basic addition. Talk about lame. Idiot. No phone, no wallet, no parents at home, huh? Oh, so it's not only has no powers, he has no solid family life? How very noble of you. But only the fortunate in life would even have that idea. Shows how lightly you take the real world. It'd be so much easier if I were stronger. First of all, these manipulative insects are sort of stacking the odds in his favor, just because it's not a test of what Mob would be like without his powers. It's a test of what Mob would be like without his powers and everything else. Can you join the Body Improvement Club in this scenario? I feel like that would go a long way. Perhaps the point he's trying to drive home is that you're only what life gives you. Like, the goodness that you have, the good person that you are, is not from you necessarily. It's not something that you draw on or that you have control over. It's just random chance and that you're lucky. And if other people don't have the things you have, there's no hope for them. And so therefore, in a sense, you're sort of standing on the necks of other people or not understanding them, not understanding cruelty, not really having your eyes open to the cruelty of the world and deserve to be punished in a sense. That's sort of the general feeling I'm getting from it, which to me is just all sorts of wrong. First of all, I think it's one of the weakest ways of looking at things. I think when it comes to personal philosophies, the more they focus on what one has power over and leveraging the maximum amount of internal development and personal responsibility and seeking truth and not doing things that feel wrong, building principles and then following them, it's just always going to have way more power. And I know for a fact is attainable. And when I say these things, this person might accuse me of being in the same position as, as Mob, right? Like the only reason I can form good things for myself is because I have been very lucky. And there's definitely some truth to that. You know, like the more resources you have at your disposal, the easier it is to sort of have the free space to work on your identity and your self-actualization, so-called. But it's not just me and it's not just people in good positions. In fact, there are a lot of people in great positions who are absolutely terrible and miserable. And there are a lot of people who came out of really horrendous situations that ended up being really amazing, strong, truly generous, kind, solid people. I feel like if there is anything circumstantial and accidental in this, it is only whether or not the person can come to the realization that they have agency and responsibility in their own lives for who they are. And also I understand why someone like Mob or just anyone might be susceptible to feeling bad about what they have. But for me, I think recognizing that there are different circumstances in life and recognizing ways in which one has been lucky or maybe more fortunate than others is not mutually exclusive at all, nor should be with really appreciating the great things one has in life. Like Mob should not feel bad about having a great family. That's an amazing thing. In fact, you should lean into it as much as possible. People who are sort of clawing their way out of despair, people who hold this very philosophy that they have no possibility of changing or improving their own selves, will use this as a weapon to try to bring other people down because people who are weak often hate strength since they don't see any pathways to strength themselves. But that's not the kind of thing you want to weaken yourself for. You do the world a favor by being strong. And if you're deriving strength from the things that you have in your life, that's, that's a good thing. And if one is strong enough, even if some of that is a result of circumstance, then better than tarnishing the beautiful things in your life is to use your life in service of others and to actually try to do good things with the solid foundation that you have. Even if that just means you being strong, that's enough in my opinion. But Ma being such a great and conscientious and loving and compassionate kid, I could see him sort of being affected by this, at least at first, but he also has something extra that is not circumstance. Or at least he's had enough circumstance to turn the corner where it's him now. It's in him and it's self-directed. And he's going to win this exchange, but it might be a long, hard internal psychic battle. Oh no, not you too. Wait, I thought I heard you say that you loved milk. Is this flirting? Are we flirting? Ew, you totally reek. Because you just poured milk? <laughs> I feel like the real challenge in this scenario is just getting out of junior high. It's something she and many people do routinely. If you don't become stronger, you'll be used, exploited, and will forever be a stepping stone for others. <sighs> I mean, this would ring more true if we hadn't already seen Mob's unbelievably solid backbone. It just depends on what's at stake. And I guess to the guy's credit, one thing Mob could do that might actually be a really useful skill 
at least in this scenario, is maybe to channel the same energy he has towards protecting others and being in service of others to himself, which is harder than it sounds. I mean, as selfish as people are inclined to be at times, there is a personality type and there are scenarios for I think everyone where, you know, yourself comes last because you know you can handle it, right? You know you can handle the blow. And so it's easy to sort of rationalize that as well. It's just me, you know, I'll, I'd rather take the pain than other people. But while there's a certain amount of that that's noble, there's a certain amount of that that's unnecessary and that nobody wants for you, you know, nobody that actually matters. He should have been completely done in less than a minute. Cause if this keeps up, he'll lose his sense of self and he's gonna die. Mob is someone who has a knack for solving things on his own. Look at this faith, his faith in his boy. Hell yeah, believe in Mob. All the negative emotions are welling up inside you. But after living in this world for six months without your powers, I'd say that's only natural. It's a lot of time. We're in the Ymir zone of infinite time. Giving advice and solving various problems. Yeah, where did we go wrong, my Keiji san a mysterious illness, and the fees for her treatment were beyond obscene. I started taking underground jobs to make ends meet. I even gave up sleep to earn as much as I could. I know that feeling. <laughs> The deeds I committed to help pay the bills brought evil around me. And that's what ended up plaguing her. I should have doubted my way of life. How I was being used by others. I see. I sought out those who brought misery and misfortune to others. And punished them. These acts of justice are how I chose to use my abilities. He's using the idea of justice to mask his own bitterness. It feels like resentment and contempt for the world. Fairness is a really odd concept in general because things are the way they are, you know? And you can't really bargain with existence in that way. It doesn't conform to what you want it to be. It's just the truth. There's darkness in the world. People are going to be dark. There are going to be times where we're powerless. There are outcomes we can't affect. That's just what it is. And there are some really, really deep levels of resentment that can form when the world doesn't match the image you need it to be for yourself because the alternative scares you. And it's really easy to see the slope into full decline because you have X perception of the world, right? And maybe that's a, a perception of self, like something that, that I deserve, something I'm owed from the world. Or it can be that there are certain truths that are too terrifying to look at. And so a artificial reality is constructed that is more satisfying or less soul crushing to look at. But then either way, the world keeps giving you feedback that that's not it. Like you haven't gotten to truth yet. You haven't accepted certain things. And that creates incredible personal dissonance between this image you're trying to hold on to and reality just throwing every possible thing at you to shatter that illusion while you're desperately trying to hold it together for dear life. From there, since things are out of whack, since you're out of balance, and maybe because you feel powerless, you start to discard some of the things you do have because you're like, well, fine, if the game's rotten, what good were the values I had anyway? Because I think the initial way most people approach right and wrong is about reward and punishment. So if you're not getting the reward you want out of life, you're not getting what you feel you're owed or you feel your level is relative to society, then something is broken and it's not your conception because that would be difficult to admit. It's the world that's broken and it's a threat and balance must be restored. And then you start to do the same things. And man, if there's one thing I've learned this year, you gain nothing from trading your values for results, nothing. It's like a really fast way to hell. You start doing things you know are wrong or just feel wrong, or you would say are wrong for anyone else to do to try to affect circumstance to match something that was a lie in the first place, you get nothing. You go deeper down, you get darkness, this curse that affected his mother, apparently. And then you turn around and look for things strong and you don't have them because you gave them up. You gave them up for something that never was going to give you what you wanted in the first place. Because at the root of the problem is a lie. It's a personal lie. And that's where it starts. Here you go. But he still has the emotional energy to feed cats. So what the hell are you doing? No, go away. Don't you know that feeding strays is a disservice to the public? People feed you. The cat's probably better off dead than alive. I'll just drop it off at a shelter. Drop yourself off at a shelter. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna hate Mob. Partly because they can't crush him. Now we can all make a run for it. Call it up, there they go. You're not staying here. Brave class of psychics. The done for. You gotta accept that. Why not run away? Because I still have faith in him. Hell yeah. Let me guess. I'm with you, Reagan. This is the first time someone's placed so much trust in you too, right? Uh, uh... Mob only trusts us because he's stupid. <laughs> stupid like a fox. <sighs> Come on, Dimple. Guess I'll have to find a way to take care of this one myself. <laughs> Could Dimple actually help? That'd be good. Stop letting them use you however they choose. Let yourself be reborn. If you look deeper, you can understand that. They're just lost souls. I shall give you strength. Even though it's hard when you're in pain. It's tough when you're at, like actually in pain or getting attacked. You owe me one. Now that I've helped you, you'd better win this. Interesting. Apologize. But this yes, isn't like any disappear. kind of progress. Apologize. He's just, you know, become the bully. You finally changed. You were a lot like me. And that's why I didn't want you to travel the same path I did. 
I feel like he wants a commiserator. <laughs> You've always stuck to your values, even when you fought Hanazawa. Right. On top of that, why are you losing to a bunch of common street thugs? Aren't you in the body improvement club? <laughs> what happened to all those muscles you've been building up? Yeah, I'm not really seen a lot of progress there, except for emotional progress. Do you want your beloved Tsubomi to hate your guts? <laughs> well, that broke right through. Ritsu, eh. <laughs> Family, eh. Reagan, whatever. Tsubomi, though. Now that's a bit much. I like it. It's a good look for him. Head's still tiny, though. Thanks, Dimple. You saved me. I mean, Dimple actually did him huge solid. In a way, it's sort of back to circumstance, right? Because someone he knows, someone who cares about him, stepped in and gave him the support that other people might have. But it's also not an accident that he has that kind of support. You know, he's recognized for being who he is. The world can be a cruel and messed up place. Right. You helped like me that's see a key it insight. Light. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Right. You can't ignore the Don't darkness. It doesn't you. work. I'm surrounded by good people. I need to be more thankful for them. Right. It's both. Thanks to them, I'm stronger. Much stronger than if I'd been on my own. If I'm able to change, then anyone should be able to. This, it just feels so right. It just feels so exactly right. And it's the worst thing you, you can say to him. In this world, might give in to you, but I won't. Ooh. <laughs> I've got a job to do. I still have to save that awful Minori. Hand outstretched in challenge. Love it. Guess we're gonna have to fight. You up for this, Shigeo? He feels stronger than ever. <laughs> Every being in this world is... I mean, Mob's great for who he is, but I mean, his powers just feel so, so great. Watching him kick ass. I'm going to this is beautiful. This evil spirit and go back to reality. <laughs> there will always be plenty of things in the world to bring you down. That's true. Life is frustrating, devoid of meaning, and so, so painful. I can hear them. The voices of the dead. Wow, this is such an unbelievable scene. Holy crap. Is this how they felt when they were alive? The world can be such a cruel place. Oh. Am I really going to be able to breathe? <gasps> that voice. Oh man, it's so beautiful. It's so right, man. I'm just saying that a lot, but... I always thought these powers were trivial. That they were no good to anybody. But I can use them to save people! <laughs> he's, he's totally aligned. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Shigeo, you did it! I always knew he would, just like Reagan. The little help from an unexpected ally. It's dangerous, so stay back and leave this to me. <laughs> he really has changed, huh? You got like more handsome as well, my little, my little man. Just as happiness gleams in the shadows of sorrow, only in the darkest depths of fear does courage truly shine. <laughs> man, it's so spectacular. Purifying light. The powerful blast created from Mob's positive emotions at 100%. <laughs> I love how on the nose it is with the metaphor. I'm gonna be alright, just leave me! Really? You sure about that? <gasps> Have faith. <laughs> Who is this kid? He just looks and sounds different. This just looks so cool. I'm going to save Minori and exorcise these guys before I go. I'll be back, I promise. Don't worry! He's got Super Saiyan hair while he's at it. Fine! Catch me if you can, you bastard! Bring it! See you on the other side! It's one of the most interesting visually visual things I've ever seen in shows. Your path will lead you to the same place mine did. To ruin. Oh, it's a whole lot stronger than he was. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely feeling the One Punch Man here. No. I was not expecting this from this episode. What is this thing? Once your vessel has been completely shattered, that is what remains. What? That was insane. What just happened? That was one of the most breathtaking sequences I've ever seen in my entire life. I love that line. It was something like, in the darkest depths of fear is 
where you find courage. It's not hard to see why Mob is stronger or comes out victorious. It's because he's able to accept the truth, which actually includes part of what Megami is saying. Like part of what Megami is saying is correct. There's incredible darkness in the world. There's incredible cruelty. And Mob needed to understand that. He already knew it on some level, but you can see that in, in this sequence, he understands it in a whole new way, in a way that's moving. And also to me, it feels non-hateful. It feels like sympathy. Like he's crying because he empathizes with, with other people's pain. It's not something that can be ignored. Neither this cynicism of the world is empty of meaning and life is just a struggle to win, nor the idea that life is sunshine and rainbows and everything is great and at heart people are nothing but good are correct. It exists in a duality and the path to maximum strength, I think, in trying to incorporate it is not to have a leaning one way or the other, but to be as close to the truth as possible. If I had to choose, you know, I think in a lack of understanding, optimism and trying to see the good is probably more productive or more likely to lead to a, a positive set of outcomes or choices. But I think ideally what you want is the truth. You know, you want the truth of the darkness, you want the truth of the way the world works, and you want to guard yourself from that making you someone who contributes to it. Although I'm not quite I sure you were what the end result of that was. Man, that took you ages. What's left if your vessel is shattered? You still... I'll just be going now. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, my pet. What an unexpected trophy. This guy's being built for something. Perhaps we'll see each other again sometime. I'm sure we will. I hope the actual Minori is not like Dream Minori. Are you really always like that? In real life? I That's mean... my question. Please don't pour milk on me. Actually, I am. Oh. Sorry. You can do better, Minori. But you got a, a brief shoulder pat, which is nice. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah, we can sort of understand it. That people it comes are from her pain. Change. The people around me changed me as well. Right. Now I understand that I can do the same thing for others too. In many ways, it's the opposite of Megami Megumi, where he sort of rests in a hateful lie and sort of concedes his responsibility by blaming the other world. Mob seeks to see the truth, the full truth even of pain, but then takes responsibility for his role in it. And his solution is not only to not contribute to it, but to be in service of others. I feel like if you had to pick one way to describe sort of the spectrum between heroism and villainy, that would be a pretty solid one. Wasn't even asked to be there, but somehow he managed to cast out an evil spirit that nobody else could, and then left without saying a word. The cult of Mob grows, continues to grow. Hey, isn't that... Yeah, the religion. <laughs> Wait, what did that say? Someone deposited a large chunk of change. Why aren't you claiming your reward? Just look at how many people got hurt. Not exactly a big success. Take the money, Reagan. <laughs> you should never accept Buy some money that you feel you salt. haven't earned. If you do, you'll start taking the easy way out every time. All right, respect. No good ever comes out of drowning in wealth, fame, or power. You're better off working part-time for me than becoming famous or powerful. I feel like he's gonna do both. <laughs> That's true. It's gonna sound weird, but I feel like money inappropriately earned is cursed. It goes back to the same idea, like you don't feed into the darkness for material rewards. Because you end up with a compromised soul and often not the material rewards. They have a way of disappearing if ill-gotten. The things you manipulate into your life, they have a way of being more transient in my experience. There's like a weird karma there. It's really tough, despite actually being, you know, kind of basic at face value, where there really is one sort of path. Don't do things that are wrong. <laughs> Don't sell out. Don't trade things of deeper value, i.e. your soul, for things of lesser value, i.e. money, power, fame, keeping yourself protected from a painful truth, etc. But my god, what an episode. Like, the heart, the themes, and the way they were represented with one of the most epic and visually interesting and unique action sequences I've ever seen animated. It was really satisfying, really moving, and I feel develops Mob a lot. Like, I feel like this was something critical for him maturing, you know, facing the darkness in a way so it doesn't blindside him. Because if he didn't have that understanding, and if it didn't turn into something like sympathy, or ah, this is the way things are, and this is why things are the way they are, and actually it's all sort of just human, then he would be setting himself up for a similar trap that Ugami fell into, where it's the clinging to a sort of deceit, a self-deceit that embitters one and leaves one fragile to the cruelties of life.